Hello and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman. Today we're learning how to add in the left hand for Etude in C by Albert Beale. Let's take a look at the score to get started. All right, today we're checking out the left hand for Etude in C. So let's look down here in the bass clef. And what kind of rhythmic value are we playing here in the left hand? If you said whole notes, you're correct. A whole note gets four beats. And since our time signature is 4-4, this chord will last the whole measure. Now, each one is a chord, uh, just a two-note chord, until we get down here to line three. For right now, what I'd like you to do is analyze for me the interval that the two notes of the chord form. For example, I'll do the first one. This is the interval of a third. So I'm going to write that interval down here. We'll use this as kind of an interval review as we analyze these. Okay, so this interval is a third. Can you figure out this one and this one? And either write it down in your music or you can say it out loud. Okay, the correct answer for this one is a sixth. And the correct interval for this one is a fifth. All right, now let's go down and do two more. Can you figure out this interval and this interval? Go ahead and write it in your music or say it out loud. Okay, this one is a fourth and this one is a third. Now, let's try to play these on the piano. All right, can you tell me the letter names for the first two notes the left hand plays? If you said E and G, you're correct. Here's my middle C, so we're just a little below that on these two notes. And what finger numbers should I be using to play these two notes? If you said one and two, you're correct. It's written right in the music. Now, normally you might want to play this interval with a one and three, but there's a good reason that the music is asking you to do a one and two. So, as we're getting to these more advanced songs, I ask you to really trust the finger numbers you see. Sometimes it may not make total sense, but they're always there for a reason, okay? So, just trust it and follow them exactly as you see for now. We're gonna use the finger one and two, and we hold that for four beats, so let's try that. Go ahead and get your hand in position, and let's do it together. Go, one, two, three, Four, good, and now you'll see that the next interval is a sixth. Does the top note change? No. I think when you're going from chord to chord, always try and look and compare the two chords, or sorry, compare the previous chord to the next one. And I can see that that top note didn't change, so I'm gonna use that as my anchor, and then if I measure down a sixth from there, I know I've got a B on the bottom. Now that helps me realize why we started with a one, two, because my finger five is kind of already naturally falling on that B. Okay, so let's try putting those two intervals together. Can you play this with me? Go. One, two, three, four, down to the six. One, two, three, four. Good. Now you'll see that the next interval is a fifth. The top note, once again, stays the same. That G is going to repeat. So to make the fifth, we've got to step up the bottom note. And since my finger four is there, I'll use finger four. But then you'll see this funny little symbol, a four dash five. That, my friend, is a very fancy and advanced finger technique, which is called a finger substitution. What you're going to do when you see something like that is you play it with the four and then you're going to substitute without letting go of the note your finger five. Did you see how I did that? Without letting go of this note, I actually change from a finger four to a finger five. And that is so these fingers can be ready for your, the next upcoming chords. Okay, so once again, we are down here on this six with finger five. So I'm going to use finger four to play that next one. Then I'm going to substitute without letting go of that note my finger five. Okay, now that's a little bit tricky, looks simple, but it may actually feel trickier than, than you realize. So I'd like you to practice this on your own a few times. Go from this sixth with the G and the B, and then go to the fifth with finger four, and then try substituting out finger five without letting go of the note.
Press pause, try that several times until it feels comfortable. Then you can press play to go on. Okay, so after you've done that finger substitution, let's look at the next chord. We see that we've got a fourth. Once again, our top note is our anchor. That one repeats. So we just have to step up to D and G. And then the next one's a third. Again, the top note's our anchor. So we're just gonna step that bottom note up again. So we kind of have a pattern here, huh? We've had that sixth, then fifth, then fourth, then third. Pretty straightforward. Okay, but now we're on a one and three. Let's try going that far all the way from the beginning, counting one, two, three, four on each chord. Ready? We're going back to the beginning with one and two on E and G. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four down to the sixth, three, four up to the fifth, substitute finger to fourth, three, four to third, two, three, four. Good. Let's go on to the next note. You'll see in the left hand we have just an F with finger two. So let's try that. One, two, three, four. Then we get our first three note chord. Looking at the music, can you tell me the letter names for these three notes? If you said D, F, and G, you are correct. We had that F before and now we're adding this G a step above and this D a skip below. That is a D, F, G chord, so you're going to have to use fingers one, two, and four. Let's try playing that chord. Good. And then look at the last measure, and can you tell me the letter names of this three note chord? If you said C, E, and G, you're correct. We get our good old C major triad. C, E, G. So let's practice going from this chord, the D, F, G chord, to the C major chord. Press pause and I'd like you to try going between those two chords three or four or five times and then press play when you're ready to go on. Now I'm going to show you an advanced technique that will help your chords sound really legato when you play from chord to chord. Whenever you play two chords in a row, a lot of times you're going to lift up all the keys that you were playing before and then just re-strike the keys together for your next chord. But that makes it not legato. If you, lift up, if you lift up both keys, it breaks the sound for a second. It gives you silence for that moment that you lift. So if I'm lifting both of these and then playing my next chord, you can't call that a legato sound. Well, there is a way to make a chord to chord sound legato. The trick is you have to find which note repeats. And in this case, it's always the G. So I do have to lift that one up because if you don't lift it up, you can't play it again. But the E is not going to repeat. So I can keep holding that one down until the last possible moment when I play the B. So you see how I did that? I'm going to hold one, two, three, and then on beat four, I'm going to cheat by lifting up this G so it's ready to repeat, but I'm not going to let go of this E. And then when I play the next chord, that's when I can let go. And that gives me a legato sound. Can you hear the difference? Here is the wrong way, not legato. One, two, three, lift, four. So on that lift, I lost my sound and I broke the legato. But if I only lift the G on beat four, one, two, three, four, See, that gave me a legato sound because I was still holding the E. And then I could do that on the next one too. So when I'm holding this chord down, once again, since the G repeats, I have to lift that one on beat four, but hold down the B, and then together I can play the next chord, substitute. Once again, lift the G, next chord, hold, I mean, lift the G, but hold the D. Do you hear the difference? Here's legato. So I have to lift that G early. Lift, but not here. Lift only the G. If I lift both, it sounds like this. Big difference, because it's not legato. So again, this is a little bit advanced. The, the trick is to always lift the note that's repeating, but not the other note, which isn't repeating. 
and then you can get a legato sound from chord to chord, which will really help give this etude the right sound. Remember, this is an etude. It's not meant to be easy. So challenge yourself and see if you can get that kind of legato finger technique. I'd like you to press pause, practice through the entire left hand part. You can always download the sheet music from our website and try that on your own a few times, then press play when you're ready to try it with me. Okay, we are going to try playing this together. For starters, I'd like you to use just your left hand. I'm going to play both hands. If you've already been practicing this for a while and you want to try hands together, you can. But if this is your first day on this lesson, just do left hand only. I'm going to set my metronome to 96 beats per minute, and that will be the quarter note. So as you play these chords, you're going to count one, two, three, four, one, two. I'll be adding in the right hand as well. Let's play A2 and C. I'll count four beats to get us started. One, two, three, four. Once you feel like you have the left hand mastered, feel free to try adding in the right hand. When you do that, you're going to slow the metronome down from where you had it mastered in the right hand. You might be playing the right hand alone really fast. You'll definitely want to slow it back down to a more comfortable speed. Uh, maybe at first, you'll just be doing, say, 168, one note per click. And eventually you'll get it up to 200, one note per click, which means you can set it back to 100, two notes per click, and then gradually speed it up to your final speed of 126 as the quarter note, which means you'll be playing the right hand two notes per metronome click. Once you have this mastered, make a video and please share it with me on our website or on Facebook. I'd love to see how you're doing. Nice work learning the left hand part for Etude in C. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.